Hello everyone, Hyper here. With patch 8.2 releasing in just a couple of days here, I thought it was a good time to make a video about DK changes for next patch, take a look at how those buffs and ability changes are actually going to affect our rotation and the class overall, and then take a quick look at the essences, how that system is going to play out, um, and maybe dive a little bit into the loot that is going to be coming out of the next raid. Okay, so first of all, let's take a look at some of the Unholy class changes that they're making. Um, so with Unholy TLDR, there's not much changing. Most of the buffs and nerfs are just going to end up being an overall damage increase. It's not going to change your play style whatsoever. So Death Coil, slightly getting buffed. Fester Strike, slightly getting buffed. Festering Wounds, slightly getting buffed. Um... Mastery Dreadblade, so they just fixed a typo in our Mastery, a tooltip. Skirt Strike, slightly getting buffed. Uh, and then they fixed tooltip info for our Pet Claw and Pet Monstrous Blow. And then in, in Talents, Claw and Shadows got buffed by 6% from 40 to 46. So all of these changes um, is just an overall buff to Unholy. It ends up being, I think, around 5% overall. Um, as you can tell, they just buffed basically our core rotation by, by a little bit on each ability. So this won't really change anything. It's just going to push our damage a little bit higher. The interesting changes are going to be for Frost specifically. So the first thing that they changed is Frost Fever and the way that Runic Power gain from it works. Essentially, right now, um, if you apply Frost Fever to all of your targets, you have a chance that it's going to proc. And then you have an internal cooldown, which um, you have to wait. So it doesn't really matter uh, past a certain point how many targets you have Frost Fever applied to because you will be hitting that internal cooldown on it and not really benefiting past a certain number of targets. So they kind of changed this a little bit to give you a better way of getting runic power back where you can technically proc it multiple times on multiple targets. And they also changed it to get diminishing returns based on the targets you have. However, just because of the way it works, um, it's explained really well in one of the Wowhead articles written by, I believe, Biceps, where he has a graph showing exactly how the target scaling works on this. Overall, on low number of targets, you won't really notice a change. On high number of targets, you will just get a little more runic power back. Frost Strike, um, just buffed. They're really trying to encourage or add damage to abilities outside of Breath of Sindragosa, which is something that I've noticed. Uh, one big change here is Killing Machine. So KM procs were bugged basically since the launch of BFA, where we only got about 1.5 procs per minute instead of the intended 4.5. So if you noticed uh, when you're playing Frost, probably in Old Deer, um, your killer machine wasn't really proccing as often as it should have, so this has been fixed, which also increases the benefit of the murderous efficiency talent. Basically, since we had less KM procs overall, this talent was, you know, way less beneficial than it could be. Now, with the fixed proc rate, this talent will be a little bit better to use. But depending on the build, RA might still be better, especially for Breath of Sindragosa. So the next change is to Runic Empowerment. Um, each Runic Power you spend has a 2% chance to instantly grant you a rune up from 1.5%. This is a pretty big change if you think about it numerically. It, it might only seem like a 0.5% increase, but that is 0.5% per Runic Power increase. And they also increased the tick rate of your Breath of Sindragosa, so it will drain more resources, so you have an even higher chance of proccing your Runic Empowerment. Um, so this change will just essentially add more resources to your rotation overall. Now, the big changes to Breath of Sindragosa. Um, they changed the cost of 
from 15 runic power per second up to 16 runic power per second. Initially, this was, I believe, 18 when they changed it for the first time. But that was draining way, way, way too many resources. And you just couldn't do anything else but spam obliterate throughout your entire uh, BOS rotation. So with 16, it is still a noticeable change. And whenever you're hitting a target, um, you will notice that you're draining more resources during BOS than you were previously. However, they kind of offset this a little bit by giving you more resources. The only thing that I really noticed here is that with 16 uh, runic power per second, it is a big enough increase that sometimes you end up having to just sit on Howling Blast procs instead of being able to use them. Otherwise, your BOS will fall off. Now, another big change to Breath of Sindragosa is that whenever you activate it, you instantly get two runes. And whenever it runs out, again, you instantly get two runes back. And this is just a nice uh, quality of life change that will add a little more fluidity to your rotation. Because previously, when you weren't getting runes from Breath of Sindragosa at all, essentially, you had to pull up both runic power and runes before you could go into your Breath of Sindragosa window. And then as soon as it fell off, you were rune starved because obviously you were spamming out all those obliterates to keep the Breath of Sindragosa up. And you were runic power starved because whenever it ran out, it was because you ran out of runic power. So for like five seconds after BOS was over, you were essentially just sitting there auto attacking. And same thing goes for before. You saved up those runes, you saved up their runic power, and you were just kind of sitting there auto attacking, getting ready for Breath of Sindragosa. So with this change, they essentially removed having to pull runes. You still have to pull runic power, but that doesn't really take as long and you don't have to plan as much for it. Probably about 10 seconds before, um, maybe a little bit longer, 12 seconds before, you will start building up the runic power. And then based on how you get procs back, you might even spend a little bit. Um, and then right when your Breath of Sindragosa comes up, all you have to ha have uh, available is essentially one rune. Anything above that is a little bit wasted. But because of the way Breath of Sindragosa ends up working out, you will most likely still want to save 2 plus runes, even if you're wasting a little bit of your rune regen. But this change overall is pretty nice. Um, it makes your rotation overall feel like you have less downtime with the increased um, runic power that you get back, the increased number of runes that you get back. And also with the BOS change, I believe these are good changes as far as reducing the downtime you have um, between globals and just standing there auto attacking. Um, they did nerf the damage of Breath of Sindragosa by 10%, but that is just to make up for all these benefits that you're getting. Like you're getting more runes and it's also draining more resources. So overall, it will still be a buff to Breath of Sindragosa. The next change here is to Ice Cap, which is a level 100 talent um, that probably haven't used in a long, long time. Basically, they buffed the CDR that you get on crits from 1 second to 3 seconds on your Pillar of Frost, which is very, very significant. They triple the CDR that you get. Even with all those changes, on single target, um, the way our kit works out, Breath of Sindragosa still seems to be better. However, on AoE, and especially in dungeon builds, an Ice Cap build might see more play in the future. This is because of the way that it in interacts with Frost Sight, and especially with the new Essence, um, which I tried not to really talk about too much yet, since... Um, there's fairly little information about them as far as which one will be best. But with the Blood of the Enemy Essence, that gives you crit. And also stacking a little bit of crit in your build, crit mastery, you will be able to get a CD reduction on your Pillar of Frost, essentially on every single use of Frost Sight, as long as you have a few enemies. And then obviously whenever you're getting KM procs, it is guaranteed. But... With this Ice Cap build, um, and potentially having some sort of uh, synergy between stacking um, a little bit of crit and having multiple enemies and then being able to get the CDR on every single Frost site whenever you're fighting a number of enemies, 
you will have some insane uptime on Pillar of Frost. Now there is an ICD on this. Um, well, I shouldn't say ICD, but technically you can't get more than one CDR per Frostlight cast. So that is the cap of how much CDR you can get. You will essentially get a three second reduction per Frostlight cast in AOE situations. So as long as you're able to spam out those frost sites, you will see a huge CDR gain and you will be able to keep either Pillar of Frost or Icy Citadel um, up most of the time in AOE situations. So for single target, obviously this is a little less beneficial because you have less instances of proccing the CDR and also because Breath of Sindragosa is so strong. But for AOE, this could potentially present some interesting builds uh, that we haven't really seen so far in BFA. So those are the class changes out of the way. Um, it's time to look at the Azerite specifically, the Azerite Essences. So I did a video back when these were initially released talking about each one. Since then, a few of them have been changed and I think we got one or two new ones. Um, I think Ripple in Space was not added when I made the video and also the Conflict and Strife one was not added when I made the initial video. I won't go too in depth on these, but I just wanted to give you a kind of an idea of what I will be targeting and some potential interactions that might be pretty powerful. So both for Frost and for Unholy, uh, especially in AoE, Blood of the Enemy might be one of the better Azrite traits. So this will be mostly a Mythic Plus trait, in my opinion. Or if there's bosses where you have Heavy Cleave, this trait might see quite a bit of use. Now this is the PvP trait. Um, I believe it comes from doing Battlegrounds. Overall, it just increases your crit damage um, and increases your crit and then you are able to stack it up um, the passive or the minor part of it you're able to stack it up pretty high and pretty frequently so you're just getting a basic uh, secondary stat boost out of it the second trait here is condensed life force and i'm curious to see how this plays out especially for unholy because it does line up with every other unholy frenzy and apocalypse so essentially you just summon a guardian that ramps some haste and you also deal increased damage to the target that it is targeting. So since it lines up with every other Unholy Frenzy, um, it might be a powerful enough interaction where this might see use on single target. Now for Frost, the reason why I don't believe it will be that strong is because first of all, it ramps you haste and as Frost, we don't benefit that much from haste. And also it is on a three minute cooldown, which for Frost, it doesn't really synergize with anything since our Breath of Syndragosa is about a 2 minute 15 second cooldown. Conflict and Strife. So for Frost, this will give you Chill Streak and for Unholy, this will give you Necrotic Strike. I don't really see either of those as being too beneficial, um, to be honest. Um, we'll have to see how this plays out numerically, but I don't see this as right trait being used or as right essence being used too much. Um, essence of focusing iris, I will just skip over because it's essentially just an AOE burst. Depends on how strong the numbers are, it might see use on Mythic Plus or some AOE fights. Next one here is Memory of Lucid Dreams, which is obviously the go to choice currently for Frost. Now here in the tooltip it says a, it is a 3 minute cooldown, however we got a hotfix note yesterday, I believe last night, that they are changing this to a 2 minute cooldown, which will make it even more beneficial for Frost, because obviously on a 2 minute cooldown it means that it, it will line up with every single Breath of Syndragosa, which is very very nice for resource generation during the Breath of Syndragosa window. Now, since my initial video, they did change this from runic power generation rate to rune generation rate. So that is overall a nerf to it because when you were genning runic power from it, it was just insane. You would press one obliterate and you would get a ridiculous amount of runic power from it. And you were essentially able to play super conservatively with your runes and your Breath of Syndragosa would still not fall off. 
Um, I'm still looking at how you use this ideally. Uh, do you always wait for your ERW to fall off, then immediately you pop this trade? Or will you end up doing something like whenever you're below X runes and X runic power, that's when you use it? For Unholy, this has kind of less benefits, um, in my opinion. Uh, but it will still it will be pretty nice in your burst window. But on a two minute cooldown, it won't line up super nice. On a three minute cooldown, there could have been an argument made for it. Um, I feel like on a two minute cooldown, it is a little bit weaker. But if you're able to use it with your unholy frenzy, you're able to get more festering wounds out, and you're able to pop more wounds, increasing your fester might stacks a lot quicker. So we'll see how this plays out. Purification protocol, um, AOE blast, I won't really talk about this too much. Ripple in space, the only time I can see this being used is if you need a blink ability on a certain fight. Um, if you think of bosses like Unat, for example, blinks are very beneficial because you're able to blink the beam and avoid that dot. So if we see something similar in the next raid, then you might use this if the damage is significant enough that avoiding it is a huge, huge damage save for your group. Otherwise, I don't really see this as a strong choice. Crucible Flame, basic single target burst, it will just come down to how they tune the numbers on this. Same with um, Unbound Force. A vision of perfection since the last time I talked about this, they actually changed it. So for Frost, um, it has a chance to proc your Empowered Rune Weapon for 35% of its base duration. And whenever it procs, you get a little bit of haste. And you also get CDR on Empowered Rune Weapon. With the Breath of Syndragosa build, I don't see this being used essentially at all because it desyncs your ERW from your Breath of Syndragosa. However, if you go into a dungeon and you're using that Ice Cap build, um, it might be a little bit beneficial and depending on how some of the other traits work out here, um, it might see some use. For Unholy, you will get two ghouls from your army of the dead for 19 seconds um that was changed from one ghoul for 15 seconds so one ghoul for 15 seconds was essentially no damage two ghouls for 19 seconds uh it, it, it's a little bit of damage and then it just reduces the cd on your apocalypse overall um I don't see it as being super strong because while Apocalypse is a nice cooldown, it's not really a super hard hitting cooldown. Like if you think of like Fire Mage Combustion or Icy Veins, um, I'm not even sure what this procs for other classes. But since Unholy just has a bunch of small cooldowns rather than one or two big ones, the CDR on one specific cooldown is not really all that powerful. And then the last but not least, World Vein uh, Resonance. This is just a strength boost to you. Um, and again, depending on how this plays out numerically and tuning wise, you might end up using it, might not. But my guess is that you will not really be using this considering some of the other essences. So as far as targeting these essences, my plan for before the raid comes out um, is to get Blood of the Enemy get Memory of the Lucid Dreams. Those are the two major ones that I definitely want to get. And then Condensed Life Force um, that comes from the raid, so I can't really get it pre-raid. That is kind of the third one that I would like to get. The rest are kind of secondary tier, um, and I will just get them um, as I can. But the important ones, Lucid Dreams and Blood of the Enemy, those two I definitely want to be getting as soon as I can. So as far as which one is best, um, I can't really tell you right now because we just don't have the data. A lot of these just come down to a simple numerical comparison and it will depend on how they are tuned. I've been keeping an eye on the SimC team and how they've been updating their program. Now, as soon as they implement Azrite Essences, I will make sure to update the Frost and Unholy DK APL uh, so you guys can go ahead and sim these. Um, I assume some people in the Frost DK Discord are, or the, the DK Discord overall are already working on this. 
But in case I happen to get that done before they do, I will make sure to let you guys know in my Discord. And make sure to keep an eye on resources that, that I share there because basically everything for the next patch, um, be, you know, APL for simming or BIS list or, you know, which shrink is to target, anything along those lines, um, how to use specific essences, I will have in my Discord. And then once we get a little further into the patch, I will have uh, dedicated videos to just as right essences. To be honest, the trinkets are not all that great. There's a few that I think have some potential, but most of these will just come down to simming whichever one works best for you. Um, as far as interesting trinkets go, um, the one from Queen Ashara that gives you a massive strength boost um, that you have to channel might be interesting to use for Frost. And then the trinket which gives you haste. There we go. Um, and then gives you more haste depending on the missing health of your target. That might be an interesting trinket for Unholy. But other than that, they're just basic do damage trinkets to the boss passively. So those just need to be simmed whenever that is available. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. I will try to help you out as much as I can. I will have uh, further videos as we get closer to the raid release and after raid release as far as rotation changes and updated guides for both Frost and Unholy. And so far, um, I get this question a lot, which looks to be better, Frost or Unholy? I would put my money on Frost just because of some of the Azrite Essence interactions, but you never know based on, on Azrite pieces from the raid and trinkets either one could be better next raid. Again, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one.